Hey everyone, I am super excited to share with you my latest plugin camera composition overlays version two, which is a massive update in feature rich version of my free camera composition overlays pack that I released a few months ago, uh, creating cinematic and engaging imagery with virtual cameras honestly has never been easier. Uh, and this significant upgrade now includes a dockable editor window with an efficiently designed layout. I like to think it's an efficiently designed layout. Um, and there's lots of really cool features to show you. But as you can see now, this window can float here. You can dock it wherever you want. I found that docking here makes the most sense based on its proximity to the outliner. I'm going to show you why in, in a second. So the first thing I want to show you here, if you go to settings and you go to plugins here and you type in camera combo, you'll see that this plugin has been enabled here for the composition overlays. And then also too, I just wanted to highlight my pro film backs and crops plugin here as well. The reason why is that this plugin works hand in hand with the camera composition overlays plugin. It is not dependent on it. And you can certainly buy each one of these plugins separately, but you'll see in a, in a minute why it's so much more powerful when you use the two of them together. So I just wanted to show you that really quick. Now, the first thing to know is that there are a few different ways to launch this overlay. If I close this out here, you'll see up here above the editor viewport, there is an icon, there's a button here that's showing a, a crosshair overlay. If you click that, that'll launch the overlay. You can also launch it from the Windows drop down here. At the bottom here, you have camera composition overlays. You can launch it there as well. And the last place you can come launch this uh, widget is in the console command area. So I type in cam compo, you'll see that cam compo open. If I hit that, that'll also launch it as well. Now, I just wanna briefly walk through the interface here and show you what sort of cool features have been added. Number one, you have this select camera drop down here. Uh, this widget will scan and look for any cinema camera actors that are in your level, that are current in your level. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted to use this particular project. This is the Electric Dreams project by Epic Games. There are something like over 80 different cameras in here. So whether you're starting a brand new project or you're looking to, to do some composition on an existing project, this plugin has got you. So you come up here and every single camera that's currently in this level is listed in alphabetical order here. So you can grab it from there. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show here is super important is this auto here. The reason why this auto select here is it allows you to select from the outliner and then it will automatically load it into the plugin here. So for instance, if I come to here, this beauty shot camera 39, you'll see that it automatically selects up here. Or if I select uh, beauty camera shot 47, or if I select say lighting camera A2, you can see all this information is being pulled directly from the outliner and the details panel right into the widget. The other thing to know here is that the aspect ratio, the film back name, and the crop name, if one is in fact selected, is now being displayed here. Now, for instance, with this one, if I do have a crop selected, that becomes the active aspect ratio. So if I come down here, for instance, and I choose a crop, uh, let's go to uh, 1.85 US widescreen, and then I hit camera refresh. This is a very important button that I also wanna review next. Hit camera refresh, it'll update the information that you see in the overlay for that specific camera. So anytime that you make a change to a camera, whether you're changing a preset or you're changing a crop, you'll always wanna come back and hit this camera refresh button to make sure and ensure that that information is properly loaded. Now you can see here, the other thing is that now that I have prop selected, I have an additional visual indicator showing you that you do in fact have a crop selected and that's what's going to actually drive your aspect ratio but if i came down here and i said no crop and i hit camera refresh you see that it goes back to the original 16:9 digital film aspect ratio shown here now i'm going to go ahead and come down here and pilot this camera you can actually pilot directly from inside the interface you do not necessarily have to do that from over here inside of the viewport where it's typically done you can pilot your camera directly from here and I'm gonna show you some of the other cool features here for positioning your camera. Um, if you're starting to do some composition here, let's actually change the, the, the overlay here. Let's put it in a dynamic symmetry and I'll explain why you see root three here specifically um, in a second. Um, but let's say I choose this specific composition and I wanna do some storytelling in this, in this space here. I can start to move my camera around to just kind of see where I want this overlay 
to emphasize certain features and so forth. But once I find that, I usually don't wanna move the camera around after that. I usually wanna kinda of lock it in place. So what you can do here is you can come up here and hit store. And that way now, if you start moving some things around in your scene here, say I wanna move this tree here, or I wanna move, let's see if I can find another um, non-procedural mesh to choose here and I move this around here. But then let's say I accidentally move my camera. Well, I can come back here to the recall button and it'll bring me right back to where I was to continue doing my composition. So I just wanted to point that out. Again, camera refresh is a very important button. Anytime something might seem a little off or if one of your overlays is not scaling or does not look proportional, come back to hit camera refresh, go back into piloting your camera um, and then reselecting the overlay that you wanted to use and everything should be proper. Now in this next section here, you can see you have all of the different types of overlays that you can choose from. We've already seen the golden spiral. We've seen the dynamic symmetry. And then you also have these other universal overlays, center rays, the cross, which is the default one that will always load anytime you add a new camera or that you pilot out and back into a camera. Uh, X cross, we have a grid here. We have what I'm calling parallel lines. Uh, this is an interesting one too, because if you wanted to have horizontal lines or vertical lines, it's just a matter of rotating your overlay. So if I come in and I type in 90 degrees, I now have horizontal lines. If I want to increase the number of lines that I have in here, I would come back here and I can hit scale, hit two on the X and two on the Y, and I'm actually doubling the number of lines that I have there. So lots of flexibility in terms of what you can do with any of the overlays that you have loaded. So in addition to parallel lines, you also have the spiral here. You also have the phi grid. So this again is true to the 1.618 proportions for the phi grid. We have rule of thirds, and then we also have the dot grid. Now again, you have an infinite number of variations that you can create with the rotation, scaling, and offset tools. I could come in here and if I wanted to make these boxes a little bit smaller, I can come up here and type in four. On my X scale, I can type in four. On my Y scale, and I just have a lot of options in terms of what I can do. I can offset my overlay in the X direction and the Y direction. I can come back and I can just select a different color here for it. Whatever's gonna work for the scene so that you can see it best. Let's say I put a green one in there, hit okay. And actually let me come back and reset this. Let's say I do a spiral here. Again, you can scale this along the X axis. You can stretch it, you can squash it. Same thing along the Y axis. You can go back to the default here. So there's just a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can do with any cinema camera actor and these overlays are available to you. So let's go ahead and demonstrate what this might look like. I've, I've gone ahead and selected Tayo Cam here. I'm gonna go ahead and pilot that and let's actually use a couple of different overlays to demonstrate this. Right now I have dynamic symmetry and you'll see that the golden rectangle has been selected. And just as a point of information, the root rectangle that's being selected for dynamic symmetry is completely dependent upon the aspect ratio, whether that's the film back aspect ratio, or if you select a crop that will override the aspect ratio for the film back, and that'll be used instead to drive uh, which golden rectangle or which, sorry, which root rectangle is selected for dynamic symmetry. So in this case, with the crop here, it's 1.66. So you have the golden rectangle, but if I was to actually choose no crop, and let's see here, if I come down here to my crop settings and I hit no crop here, and I come back here to actually, let's unpilot the camera first before making that selection change. I'm gonna come back and make sure I have tile cam highlighted here. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm going to go to no crop. Now, before we had the golden rectangle that was selected, I'm gonna hit pilot here. We're gonna hit camera refresh hit pilot, come back into dynamic symmetry, and now you'll see that the root four rectangle has been selected. And that is because the aspect ratio was different. It's choosing the best dynamic symmetry root rectangle, the one that's most closely sized for the aspect ratio that's been calculated, or that's been selected. So there's a lot of cool math that's happening in the background to make it really easy for you to choose the best dynamic symmetry overlay um, and the same thing is for, for the uh, uh, golden spiral. If, you, if I select golden spiral here, you'll see that this is true to the 1.618 ratio. Um, no matter what size your aspect ratio, this will always be sized 
true to 1.618. So if I was to come in here and let's go ahead and unpilot this. And I was to come in here and do say Super 16. Let's hit camera refresh. You'll see that Super 16 millimeter has now been updated. We'll hit pilot again. And I come in here, you'll see that the golden spiral is a little bit wider. Let me try to use a, a better example. If I was to use something that had a wider aspect ratio, you'll see how this golden spiral rectangle is gonna be maintained. I'm gonna hit pilot here again to come out of it. Let's go with an Ari Alexa 65 again. For the crop, I'll just choose a super wide crop. Let's try the Ultra Panavision here. I'm gonna hit camera refresh. It's gonna update all of my settings here. I'm gonna hit pilot again. And now you'll see I have this super wide aspect ratio. And now if I click the golden spiral, you'll see that again, it's been sized properly and it's just repeating on the right and left sides here. So, and likewise, if I hit dynamic symmetry, you can see a completely different root rectangle has been chosen. The root seven rectangle, which is for a much wider aspect ratio. So all of this is being monitored, calculated, in the background, make your life easier in terms of your selections for golden spiral and dynamic symmetry. And then of course you can continue to use the center rays and all the other ones, which will just be scaled to the overall size of the film back that's selected here. So let's go ahead back to dynamic symmetry. Um, this is super wide here. This, this is actually even working out a little bit for this root seven rectangle, although it's a little bit wider than I want it to be. So I'm actually going to go back we're gonna choose a different crop. We'll keep the RA Alexis 65 for that field of view, but we will change this now to, uh, let's just go with uh, uh, Univision, two to one. Oh, actually, let me unpilot here. Let's go back and make sure that we have that camera selected, tile cam. I'm gonna come in here and change my, not my film back, but I'm gonna change my crop settings. I'm gonna go to, again, Univision, two to one here. And I'm gonna hit camera refresh. I'm gonna go ahead and pilot that. And here we're punched in a little bit tighter. And let's go ahead and hit dynamic symmetry here. So we can use this now, this dynamic symmetry. I kind of like how this is faring here. You know, and you could even, maybe when we move this so that Let's get ahead of this. I'm actually going to push in a little bit tighter here. Right now I have a root four rectangle being used here. But I want to demonstrate something with not just the dynamic symmetry here, but also with the golden spiral. So say my, right now my background, the dynamic symmetry is being utilized to kind of position these rock formations somewhat here, right? So I have these rock formations kind of following along this line and I could update this and tweak these meshes and move them around and make it, little, make it look a little bit better. This is kind of following along this line here. I might want to add some other elements here to follow along this diagonal as well. And I could even just also have this cube here. I could have this land right on the diagonal here. I already have Quinn on the diagonal here. Then I could turn this off, see what it looks like. Let's turn this back on here. I'm actually going to punch it a little bit tighter here. So let's go closer. I feel like that will do better for this image here. So let's say here. And then if I wanted to, I could add, you know, maybe I could raise some of this up. If I raise this up, looks like this is a, is a procedural mesh that's been generated here. So I would have to add in some some rock formations that are independent. Like for instance, this one here, if I wanted to move this over here, it's gonna end up being much smaller at a distance, but I could come here. If I wanted to fill this in a little bit and have something land on this intersection here, for instance. And look, I just moved my camera here. So I'm actually gonna move this back. I'm gonna hit the store button to make sure I, I, I maintain that camera position. And watch, if I move it here by accident, I come back, hit recall, and it brings me right back to where I was so I can continue with my compositional layout here. I'm gonna take this mesh here, let's scale the size of this up a little bit. Let's go four. It's a lot bigger here, and we're gonna push this back. 
push this in here so that this comes up and lands somewhere there. I'm gonna have this pushed more towards the mountains here so that it's not floating outwards. I might have it be there. And let's make this times eight. Let's double the size of it here again. Okay. So that might be a way for me to maintain the compositional structure that I'm looking for here. Let's say I leave that there as an escape there. So now I have some, some nice dynamic symmetry that's happening here for the background. Now let's say that I want to maintain that, but now I want to bring in the golden spiral. I can go with the golden spiral and let's say I want to have Quinn and this cube along the golden spiral. So let me grab Quinn. Let me grab this rock formation that she's standing on top of. And I am going to move them. Let's move Quinn first. Let's get her right to where we want to be. Say move this rock formation next. It's going to go along the x-axis here. Right to where she is. And she's kind of fading into the background. I might want to add some separation between her and the background here so it's easier to see her. Over here, I'm going to grab this cube here and put this along the line here. And for Quinn, I believe I have a point light here that I set up, point light, that I can use to separate her a little bit more from the background there. So she's a bit more obvious. If I really wanted to change, I could change the color to something that's a little bit more stark. So she really kind of stands out. Let's say it was more like a a reddish kind of light there. I said okay. And now I've used the golden spiral to compose this cube and Quinn in relation to it. So let's go ahead and turn that off. I'm gonna hit escape here so we can get rid of those other lines here. Let's hit G for game mode in here. And so we've used a combination now of dynamic symmetry. If I come back in here and turn this overlay back on. I've used dynamic symmetry to align the rock formation. And then separately, I've also used golden spiral. So there's just a lot of possibilities in terms of what you can do for using this as a creative storytelling tool. Um, so I really appreciate you taking the time to look at this plugin. I'm really looking forward to the feedback that you guys have on the use of this plugin. Any additional features that you'd be interested in, please let me know. Thank you for taking the time to look at camera composition overlays version two, and I can't wait to see what you create. Ooh.